A bad disposition cannot be justified by the amount of people with it. Meaning that just because society sees something a certain way, that advertisements and marketing and television and schools and teachers and parents say something seems to be a certain way, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is that way. So this bad dis disposition, it doesn't matter how many people expect you to follow a certain path, how much pressure is pushed upon you to act and live in a certain way. It comes down to you and the connection that you have with yourself in terms of what is the degree to which you understand yourself. So that's sort of what it comes down to is what is the degree that you understand yourself? To what degree do you understand yourself? The closer that you are connected with your heart, the more likely it is that you feel misaligned with the external pressures that come down through the system. And I'm not saying to be a rebel, a tyrant, to do everything in spite of the system. That's not what I'm saying here. But what I'm hinting at is that just because the system is structured in a certain way does not mean that that structure is actually the most positive, beneficial, and healthiest way for humanity to unfold. You see, from the BCs to now, there's been so many changes, right? So those changes, there's so much that we can't foresee. There, there's just massive surprise in the game of life. So what we need to look at is to understand that the way that we may expect situations to unfold, the expectations that we may have, are they actually serving us? Do the expectations that we have increase the amount of peace and success and prosperity in our lives? Or if not, what do the expe expectations that we have do? So what, what I want to talk about, what do we have? Flow more, stress less, and get in touch with the ego. So it, it is important to balance how you see from both the bird's eye perspective, the big picture view, and to also get a flavor of the tunnel vision, the flow in the moment, the emphasis of focus on a specific task for a specific goal. Too much bird's eye view, you don't get things done. Too much tunnel vision, focus on certain tasks, you lose touch with the big vision, why you even started. What was the reason behind doing what you're doing right now? But when we figure out the correct mixture of the big picture and the zoomed in, it gives us the freedom to understand that we are in alignment with the path that we're meant to be going down. So this alignment, it's a feeling that no, no one can give to you. You can't make it up. It's something which has been, let's use the word feedback. The feeling of being aligned with your path is simply feedback from something much more powerful and bigger than your ego. So when you get these deep senses, that's the label that we're gonna use here, is the deep senses. Feelings that are more powerful than thoughts. Feelings that almost seem irrefutable. There's something that goes on deep within where maybe you can't pinpoint what it means. Maybe you don't understand the depth behind the feeling initially. But what we're getting at here is the fact that those deep senses deserve 
further investigation, that you did not just get a deep feeling for no reason. So something I like to come to frequently is the idea that there aren't coincidences. So I'm not saying everything happens for a reason. I don't know, that seems a little bit wishy-washy. But I am feeling that there aren't coincidences. And I just think that that is a more articulate way to say that everything happens for a reason. If there's no coincidences, what does this mean? It means that the things that are occurring in the past, right now, and in the future, that they are pulling you somewhere. That the things that happen in your life are not nothing. That they're not meant to be ignored. Super small example. Not sure if I'm right, but I chose to look deeper on a certain maybe trivial topic. So I got a physical strain, pull the muscle. And rather than just acting like, eh, it is what it is, part of me says that. It is what it is. Accept it, right? Accept it. But then another part should be looking for some sort of lesson within whatever experience you're reflecting upon. So the context is for the ego to develop, the ego has to reflect. If the ego has not done any sort of reflection, how can it learn? How can it evolve, right? Because usually change is a driver rooted in the pain of complacency. So you start with that pain and then you reflect upon the pain. For me, it was a physical thing, the strain, the muscle. And I accept it, it is as it is, right? But then I go a bit deeper and look for, like what, what caused this to happen? What can I learn from this? Where is the lesson here? So nothing too profound, but for me, it just came down to, oh wait, well, maybe this could have been prevented if I had been stretching more. So that's sort of a big piece to the puzzle in what we're talking about is you might have some pain in your life and you might kind of figure out where that pain has been rooted. And then you can ask the further questions to figure out what could I do to prevent that pain in the future? Not from fear, not from scarcity, but from power and courage. Being willing to ask that question shows that you're a bit courageous because the fool doesn't even care about preventing it. And that's essentially our current healthcare system. It's, it's built upon foolishness because the current healthcare system is a sick care system. They, you know, they advertise McDonald's, they advertise processed food, they have this brilliant marketing in every fucking store. Um, and it's leading America, it's leading the world down a path of a lack of clarity and a path of unhealthy living. Disgusting. So, I'm not mad, right? That word disgusting, it's a bit aggressive. But I'm not caught, I'm not stuck, I'm not angry at the system. I'm just pointing out the truth from how I see it. Maybe it's not your truth, right? I'm not God, maybe. What's going on there? Ikshwaifab, I digress. I think it just comes down to understanding if we have a current sick care system right now, what would happen if we moved into a preventative healthcare system? A healthcare system, a holistic human, a holistic humanity which sees things, which sees problems before they happen. Be acting, acting in a way where you're so proactive that you don't get sick, you don't fall into disease because you're proactive about it. And you're not focused on what if, in curing if it happens, you're focused on not letting it happen. Or more so, rather than not letting something happen, you're focused solely on the healthy lifestyle. And then just inevitably, the things don't happen that are unhealthy because you're so aligned with your path. You're so focused on the big picture, holistic health and clarity and the freeing from the confines of the ego. 
the freeing from the pain of attachment and expectations to that which you don't control. So th this all comes together because the healthcare system affects your clarity. And if your mind's distracted, unclear, and chaotic, the odds of you having the space to reflect upon your decisions and the outcomes that your decisions have led you to, none of that's going to happen without that first initial cog in the machine, which is clarity, which then allows you to reflect and learn and change. So, like practically, what, what do we do if clarity is the fundamental driver here? What do we do to create more clarity in our lives? Well, the point that I mentioned earlier is definitely a principle, a universal principle for living a life of clarity and freedom and peace and wealth and prosperity. prosperity. And, and that principle is, I forgot what I was going to say. Let's see if it comes back. Yes, that principle is focusing so much on filling your day repeatedly with healthy rotations, healthy movements, healthy actions. When you do that, there's no space for the un unhealthy stuff. So what I'm not saying is that you can't have pleasure in your life. What I'm saying is that you have to be so consciously aware of the effect on your state of mind of pleasure and to make sure that your pleasure is balanced out with another long-term sustainably healthy action. And if that's the case, then you're onto something. Then you found out how to have the best of both worlds, right? Because relinquishing attachments, like the Buddha says, that is the essence of what life is about. But it doesn't mean that you can't have materialistic wealth, that you can't drive fast cars and have fun with beautiful ladies. But it comes down to the intention behind you and your relationship with your pleasures. If you're attached to your pleasures, if you're obsessed and gripped and imbalanced in your pleasures, even if you have the wealth, you're going to lose the wealth. But, but I don't want to root you in scarcity there. I want to emphasize the consequence of that potential out of that potential sequence of events, which is becoming imbalanced in your relationship with pleasure. You're aware of the consequence, which is the destruction of your life. It doesn't matter how healthy you are, how beautiful your relationships are, how wealthy you are. If you become imbalanced in pleasure, all of that's going to fade away. You're, you're, you're not going to be able to sustain what you've built if you let the materialistic pleasure take over. But don't forget about the materialistic pleasure. It's why we're here. It's a big portion of life. We, we wouldn't be capable of feeling that pleasure, of having that desire, that pull, if there wasn't a reason behind it. It's not a coincidence that we feel the way we do in relation to pleasure. But what it all comes down to is balancing out that consumption, that participation in quick dopamine, in instant pleasure, Balancing that out with the delaying of gratification through a healthy lifestyle founded upon a fundamental rotation of healthy actions throughout your day. So for me, walk, stretch, meditate. Those are the self-care things. But they're also helpful for business too. Because let's say you do an hour and a half of business, go for a 10 minute walk, you're back recharged. You're back ready to work on more business. But let's say you do an hour and a half of business, no break. And then you try to do another hour and a half of business, the quality of your focus, of your output is going to diminish. So, so much comes in here. It's productivity, it's balance, it's lifestyle, it's wealth, it's instant gratification, it's enjoying the pleasure. The materialistic stuff is great if it's in the right balance. So you create clarity, you create peace of mind. Your life evolves. When you balance out that relationship that you have with pleasure and with the fundamental, sustainable, healthy actions. You don't got to only do the fundamental, healthy ones. You don't only have to consume pleasure. You got to find the mixture. That's what it comes down to. So less stress, more flow, a better developed ego, a more evolved ego creates more peace in your life, allows you to be more emotionally resilient. If any of the benefits that I've talked about today 
align with you, if anything that I've said today aligns with you or resonates on a deep level, just shoot me an email below, um, agliscuscapital at protonmail.com, write session in that subject line or in the email itself. Give me a little bit of context about what you are, where you are, what you are works too. Um, and I'm willing to give you a free healthy energy breakdown session. That'll be about 45 minutes to an hour. What we'll do first, we'll create the vision, get detailed on where you want to go and identify where you're at now so we can be clear on that gap between current situation and desired situation. Next, we'll work at crafting that specific action plan for your circumstance so that you know how to get through that gap. And then third, we'll, we'll just kind of dive into anything that might be standing in your way, slowing you down, or stopping you from getting through that gap between where you're at now and where you want to go. So shoot me an email if that interests you. If you're on YouTube, drop a like, share it with a friend. I deeply appreciate that, sincerely. I mean that. And I'd love to hear what you found most valuable in this episode. Drop a comment if you want to interact there. Have a great day. Appreciate you.